I'm going to introduce you now to our final um, guest, who is Lois. Um, Lois, you could just introduce yourself. Uh, you're also in Wales. Yeah. Yeah. I am. I am living in Cardiff, but originally from North Wales. And Welsh is my first language. So it's late. So you might have a bit of Welsh in there. Sorry. <laughs> we look forward to it. Um, Lois, you've shared some pictures with me, so I'm just going to share them and perhaps as I scroll down, you could just talk us through. Um, now, am I right, Lois, to think that you you work for a church? Mm -hmm. um, so, so yeah, I work for uh, my church, Welsh Evangelical, um, Welsh speaking, but as well I work with a um, sort of a network um, um, WLF, Welsh Leadership Forum, um, that um, sort of supported creative evangelism over Wales. Um, so I have a little bit of two hats going on. Um, oh, like. no, that's great. And I think um, that's just helpful to note that um, if you know women who are in ministry for whom this is helpful, um, it's we've talked a lot about, um, you know, women from every walk of life, but it can be a really helpful programme if you are already in ministry and just want some support. Um, in that I'm just going to share this Lois and you can just talk us through it there's some lovely photos of things you've done this Christmas through the greenhouse yeah I've got um three stories um to share so uh, the project I use for my greenhouse group um so um by the way the greenhouse uh, group was great because we we decided to meet physically um, and it was so encouraging to see <laughs> what each other like face to face and giving feedback and giving sort of support. Um, so, yeah, my sort of project uh, was to um, so Emmanuel Church in Cardiff. Um, so um, we pa we partner with them and um, yeah, they wanted a gospel talk in their wreath making event. And um, so they're in a, a quite rough bit of um, Cardiff. And it was fully booked in the first two days. Um, people have been longing to come out of lockdown and do it. So they had just under 100 there, uh, which is lovely. Um, and um, only um, 16 um, Christians were seated. Um, so a lot of non Christian people came in their groups. Um, and my challenge was like not to plonk Jesus at the beginning of the evening. Um, you know, it's so hard because you just want to tell them the gospel, but it has to be edible. There's no point mm -hmm. in me giving a lovely gospel cake when, you know, they, they, they are already full or they <laughs> sort of not interested or not hungry. Um, so I really wanted to create this as a springboard for deeper conversations. <clears throat> and the other Christians uh, dotted around in each table. Um, so I wanted to do something that is um, sort of, uh, what it, what's the name, uh, sort of re relevant or, you know, uh, related to, um, and as well something that would help the wreath making. Um, so I looked at Ikipea. It's a sort of um, Japanese way of arranging flowers or giving life to flowers, which is lovely. And this sort of tradition, um, sort of like a tea ceremony, um, it's actually from Buddhist background, um, but it has really interesting thoughts on how to appreciate nature, how to sort of, um, yeah, think about. So, so one aspect of Akapia is that when you do it, you think about three elements, heaven, human and earth. You know, and that is naturally the gospel in Christmas. You know, Jesus from heaven coming to human on earth. You know, like, um, so uh, trying to tie in something that will naturally help them in their wreath making, um, but only a breath away from the gospel. So it was a springboard then for those groups to discuss more. Um, it's so hard because you just want to say all the gospel. Um, and that was really great in Greenhouse because... You know, I obviously, I often say too much. Um, so at the group, they say, okay, you maybe, you know, you can maybe edit that bit or, you know, leave them hanging here or, um, yeah, maybe don't go into detail into secondary issues. Um, so, yeah, um, so that was a great help. Um, yeah, and a good sort of uh, time. Um, then we had the Nativity Trail. Um, so um, this was um, a, a project we did in, in church 
Um, so it's using um, children's club and youth clubs. So we advertise there to say, do you want to paint an activity trail? Because they're going up in Kevnon Park, which is quite a nice park that people, it's North Cardiff and people will go there for a walk. And um, so we knew we had a, a proper audience in Kevnon Park. Um, so we created 10 sort of um, nativity scenes around the park. Um, it was up for a month uh, in December. And then each one of them had a little um, sort of uh, bilingual um, sort of perspective of, you know, the shepherds here of what happened in the story. Um, and then a QR code um, if they want to know more or there was a link to videos or a link to our website as a church. Um, so, yeah, here um, we had more than one child painting the whole thing um, <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't find any more pictures uh, putting them up and then yeah the Kemnon Park is lovely anyway so we had a great response um, so we could track people uh, with the QR codes um, so we knew how many people were looking at it and clicking on things and as well we got um, if you know if we do it again which we probably will and have bigger I want bigger characters but anyway um, is to actually partner better with other churches um, around the area um, so you know their kids can be involved um, and we had a lot of friends of friends you know saying like oh are you involved in the trail oh we loved it you know and i have been interacting with it um and yeah reminding them of the true story of christmas is always key isn't it um mm. yeah well it's lovely it's fabulous yeah. oh it's more oh it's yeah great. obviously we had to include herod yeah <laughs> it's um, quite scary <laughs> um and yeah so we we just the, the hardest bit was um talking with the council um so it's just lots of paperwork, but uh, fair play to them. It was straightforward. It was just a lot of paperwork. Um, mm. But um, yeah, so for example, they wouldn't allow us to put stuff on trees, only on uh, objects. So, um, but we, you know, you get your way around it. Mm. Um, and then um, mm. lastly, I want to share my um, sister-in-law's um, story. Um, so she was in my greenhouse group as well. Um, and she was originally thinking, oh, like she's quite good at social media. I'm, I'm not very good, but she's quite active on it. And she's thinking, oh, yeah, OK, I'll do something on social media. But she was like, as we were exploring what she could do, she felt more and more uncomfortable and more sort of um, felt it was a little bit unauthentic for her to do it or, you know, felt a little bit, yeah, not quite intuitive. And so she she didn't sit right with it. Um, so, um, yeah, we put that on side, I'll come back to that later. Um, and then what she decided to do was to do an in-person event. Um, so she just had the baby, Olwen, um, the cutest baby alive, um, <laughs> <laughs> from a perspective of Nancy. Um, and she just, um, so there's a village sort of children's, uh, sort of toddlers group, um, I think run by the local church. Um, but yeah, she's new to motherhood. Um, and these, these women are quite new to motherhood as well. Um, she only knows them through this, you know, once a week hour slot. And she's like, hey, th these are my um, sort of um, future friends. These are the people I want to invest in and being sort of, um, yeah, just, just uh, was it strategic? I can't say the word. Mm. Yeah. Strategic. Um, so that's it. Yeah. Um, so she invites him over for a baby Christmas party. Um, so she made um, made them all make decorations, so putting their hands in clay and making it an ornament. She made a lot of food. Um, she had prepared to sing songs as well, but it was um, so crazy they didn't have time for that. And just a mm -hmm. time to come to know the mothers. Um, and she had made a really amazing goodie bag with a Chris, uh, Chris, uh, Christian kids uh, book. Um, some handwritten, handwritten personal invites to her church because, you know, it's easy to put a flyer in, but she was like, actually, no, I want it to actually be personal. So she did, made them a little note with, with invitation. Um, and then she bought everybody, the babies and the mums, a present. She, she is OTT, like, but um, that's her character. So um, 
um, and it was wonderful. So one mother, um, she's an immigrant, has said that she had never since being in Britain been in somebody else's house. Um, and showing hospitality like was a big thing. So she stayed there for three hours after the party because she was mm. so sort of encouraged by the love that, you know, uh, Jenny was showing. Um, another mother came to um, Jenny's church events. So um, she brought her family to the cattle service and um, another Christmas event they were doing. Um, and since then, um, they have actually been meeting up outside of the usual like church, um, sort of uh, uh, children's playgroup and going to each other's houses and had real like friendship, going for walks um, and knowing Jenny, she'd be starting to do one-to-ones with some of them soon. Um, so that was really encouraging. So she, she, even though she felt she couldn't do social media, she could build community around her. Um, but the ironic thing, which is the funny story, um, is that um, we nearly uh, lost all one over Christmas. She was very, very ill. Um, and um, it was heartbreaking because, you know, Jenny was the only one who was able to go to the hospital and it was, it was hard. So and lots of people were praying and Jenny felt the only way I can communicate to so many people, I can't, you know, text everybody, um, was to put things on social media. So she just shared like the updates about Alwyn, you know, her thoughts, you know, her worries, you know, news and stuff like that. Um, and she had, a, um, you know, um, we, we praise God that Alwyn is totally fine now. She's totally recovered. Um, but the opportunity that Jenny had on social media <laughs> was incredible. So she was able to share authentically how she felt, how God was her rock, how God was her peace at this very traumatic time when my brother, her husband, couldn't go into the hospital. We were like waving outside of the uh, window, um, having a child who's, you know, on death's door. And she was able to communi communicate the gospel so clearly and well, just because the sort of the experience she was going through was authentic you know it wasn't a stage it wasn't like oh I think this but she was going through the pain and really um sort of sharing how the gospel sort of sustained her um through that um so yeah she did social media as well <laughs> she did <laughs> and just some duress I imagine well yeah. thank you for sharing that and that's obviously been a hugely traumatic time so thank you for sharing that story as well amidst all the others I think the thing that really struck me with all your slides was just the real love and care that had gone into each of those events um obviously in-person events um you know we're just getting back into that aren't we and just yeah. the opportunity um you Christians had to to you know um do that so joyfully is is really wonderful to see and I hope that's um given everyone just a little flavor of the kind of ways people have used the greenhouse so you can see from what we've shared it's really diverse um people using their own little situation whatever that is to create opportunities and to be spurred on in their evangelism um whether that's you know in a room full of 100 people or a little group of baby friends um through a story through a video um however the opportunity looks for you